Hello, everyone. It's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. I had a chance to talk to Jason Hill about the launch edition and kind of talk about the design process and design philosophy, which I thought was pretty interesting. So I'm going to put this interview up in three parts. It was pretty long, and it's going to be mostly unedited and raw. So, um, you know, skip through the parts that you find less interesting, and uh, hopefully you guys will uh, get some value out of it. All right. Here it is. Well, you know, why is this this way? Because uh -huh. there's so much important ideas and, and results that have come from, you know, very curated, very focused process of how you get to a decision. And I've always said, like, design is a it's a collection of decisions. Mm -hmm. And some of them are, are forced by time. But most of them are informed and forced, not forced, but adjudicated by just good design process. And design process extends to everything from the manufacturing side all the way to the customer side and everything in between, mm. right? So you have engineering concerns, you have manufacturing process concerns, you have aesthetic concerns, you have, I mean, it gets down to the point where you're deciding about literally smell and visual input of what what that result is like does that smell right does it feel right does it sound right mm -hmm. you know we've talked about this before about nvh noise vibration and harshness this is an right. important thing mm -hmm. that we're not ignorant to right okay and, and that's why this product the aptera encapsulates so much pure thinking and pure process and even though some things are like well, why did they do that it's like it's 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 not there's nothing about this vehicle or even this company that's just like shoot shoot from the hip it's okay. a very studied result right and it's it's a there's a lot of nuance that goes into this so i'm excited to have this uh, discourse with you and okay ask you as many questions as you might ask me but sure sounds good i'm trying to figure out what i'm supposed to be seeing here all of it you're doing you're doing the right thing like we're all like taking it in through our eyes mm -hmm. and judging what it is and this product is one of those things where it's either a mirror or a canvas mm. right and what I mean by that is, and this is me as being a student of like, let's say humanity and, and observation. Um, you know, humans are really excellent pattern recognition creatures. Like we're trying to find what it feels like, what it relates to. And you see that in the reaction towards Aptera. But at the same time, you like, what is it that triggers the interest in this vehicle and and why like so you're you're looking at it through your eyes and you're saying there's no words on this right it's just purely visual yeah yeah so you're saying okay what do i see it looks it looks the same mm -hmm. well it it is the same because it's the same mission it's the same end point but we have so much more depth as it relates to producibility as it relates to fidelity of you know engineering as it relates to what the material selections are and the process and how to produce this. Mm -hmm. This is the thing that I'm most excited about. It's, it's part of the story. You know, I've been working for years, the last four years on getting to this point. And we've, we can now start to tell the real story about all the, the important features that everybody either wants as via projection. They say, Oh, I, I need this. And I want that. Or, they expect, right? They expect as a vehicle, like, well, it better have a cup holder, or it better have, you know, a drain hole or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So a canvas is something that you get to paint your dreams and wishes and hopes and intelligence on. A mirror is a reflector of your intelligence or frankly, sometimes your fear or, or inability to kind of get outside of what, what expectations are. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a few products that have that 
have that kind of mirror canvas relationship. And if you think about it, it's like you're either you're either looking at something and saying, here's what I want for this, or it's reflecting your fear or or some sort of like some sort of maybe like innocence or ignorance. Ignorance is not the right word. That's a little harsh, but innocence about, well, it looks like this, but I don't understand it. Therefore, I'm going to categorize it as that's not possible. Mm. Right. So, yes, this is the Delta or sorry, not the Delta. This is the launch edition. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we had to do some things we we discovered as we are very quick to find that the parking sensors, they perform incredibly better on the nose instead of the wheel pan. And, you know, you follow hmm. your instinct, you say, okay, wheel pan is good. This is going to move. This is going to do this. And then you find out like, well, let's try it here. And you, you, you kind of AB test it very quickly. You say, okay, if then, right. Uh -huh. If we put it here, what are our limitations and what are our, you know, where, where does it perform better? So we, we, we did these rapid tests uh -huh. that in, in, on the vehicles and on, in simulation and the vehicles. And you say, you know what? This makes this makes more sense. This is more logical. So and that's interesting you say that, Jason, because um, you know, when you guys moved it inboard to the cab, I wondered yeah. why that was done. Because yeah, intuitively, I think most people would think it would work better on the wheel pants because those are kind of more outboard and more Correct. likely to hit something. So it seems like putting a, the sensors on the thing that is more likely to hit something would intuitively make more sense, but evidently that's not the case. Um, yes, it's it, it it's not that it's not the case. It's just that they perform better when they're on the nose relative to the wheel pant mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons, including you know what is what is the 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 kind of cone of. Um, the cone of sense, uh, that's not the right term, right? And remember, like, I, I I have this privileged position between, like, what is the the art and what is the science? Mm -hmm. And that's that's the magic of design. It, it's, it's, a, it's a culmination of a bunch of decisions that are informed through a process that allow it to be repeatable, manufacturable, mm -hmm. and but also allow it to be functional, efficient, in the case of Aptera, like super efficient. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even... even the journey is full of surprises because like you said, intuitively you say, let's put these sensors here, which we did. And once we ran it through, it's not that they didn't work. Mm -hmm. It's that they work better on the nose and we okay. get to use, we, we have a better chance of covering more area. And so these kind of discoveries inform all of what you see in I front see. of you. So the ultrasonic sensors there can tell you if the wheel pants are about to like hit the curb or something. Yes. Okay. Cause I think that's a concern that like I personally have and probably other people have too. As you cause... should, as, as we have before you. Yeah. Cause we were like, how are you, especially the passenger side curb, which is where most likely you'll be parking the, that side against it. You have kind of from the driver's seat, the least visualization of that area directly. So you're yes. kind of counting on the, the parking sensors to help you out. Yes. Okay. That's good to know. What else do you see? Um, the other question I had was, you know, the, the roll down parts of the window here? Yes. Um, it isn't quite flush in the back with the curvature of the door. And I'm guessing that that was a compromise that had to be made to make the thing be able to go up and down well. Is that Am I right there? You are directionally accurate because there is a limit to the curvature of the, the glass that uh, within, let's say within a range, mm -hmm. um, that this is achievable. Yeah. We can make this glass drop. We can make it retract and hide and, and do all its things without kind of either creating something new or 
changing changing the basic you know let's say parameters of what or the limits of what's possible so mm -hmm. this was an easy one to say look if we just inset this and the 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 resulting like let's say arrow hit yeah uh, does not penalize us enough to say you know we should really strive to reinvent this yeah yeah right yeah. there there is frankly there is another way to do it that that makes it more flush but it just doesn't make efficient cost yeah or you know cost benefit not right. there right got it not yeah. there and then the, the other thing is um i we noticed that the you know initially like on the beta models the the these um control arms of the suspension were kind of this like aerodynamic molded metal and now it looks like it's kind of some kind of forged piece like probably forged aluminum and then it's got some kind of covering to make it aerodynamic right the uh, fair pieces. observation and the answer is yes it's much easier to have a uh cover to help make the aerodynamic efficiency between the body and the wheel pan okay as opposed to like trying to trying to forge or cast yeah whole thing especially right. you know we've we've got the cables right you got the high voltage cables for the the in-wheel motors you've got a, a couple of other the cooling cables and the brakes um so it trying to get those all in one is mm -hmm. is it's not efficient to yeah do that but a, a, an, an an easy cover that can be you know we and we've gone through like what is that cover made of yeah Right. It's not just like, oh, it's this or that. It's like we've gone through all kinds of iterations of what is the most or not the most, what is the best way to cover this yeah. as a trade-off cost benefit mm -hmm. to effectiveness, aerodynamic efficiency, you know, all the needs that it, it that that it needs to hit or all the yeah. all the parameters that it needs to hit. Mm -hmm. This is this is the most important thing about you know informing the design decisions, the design and engineering decisions that led to this result. And, you know, we've been very efficient, like, you know, alpha admittedly, that process was just, Hey, we're going to put it out there. We're going to be capital efficient. We're going to make these vehicles. And, and now we're here at this, this, this launch edition kind of final phase. Mm -hmm. and, and again, let me reinforce, these are, these files that you're seeing, you know, alpha, we, we did a lot with, on the design side for visualization. But now this visualization, this is the same CAD data that the CPC group and the ETP and the, uh, the others that have helped us internally and externally, that's what we make this vehicle from. Mm -hmm. That's the most important part. Like it's one thing to put out a render, it's another thing to put out a, a uh, prototype. Mm -hmm. And you know you've seen last week we're sharing some of the initial um, reality of the tools and and the process. Mm -hmm. So we're we're at the beginning of an amazing story, not right. the end. Like this is not yeah. the end. So when you're we, saying we like this isn't this. just an artistic rendering. This is actually the the the, the files that the manufacturing. Is built Correct. off of. Correct. Yeah. And that, that is that they're the same piece of math. Mm -hmm. Right. And they, they get created jointly. But in the end, I'm subservient to what can be made. Right. right? Not just what looks good or what, you know, what what feels right, but it's a it's a mixture of the two. And when 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 I present to them and we we kind of have that back and forth of challenging, like how do you how do you make this? Mm -hmm. Right. Not just how do you make one, but how do you make this repeatedly? How do you make it efficiently? What is that material? And then they kick back that piece of math to mm -hmm. me. And then I put it in, into the thing that you're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. That's that's the most amazing part of this whole, you know, um, journey, mm. this whole, you know, beginning. We're beginning for this. So. What do you see here? Uh, the undersurface of the hatch, which I have a question about. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So I think, you know, you 
you were the first one to release the uh, kind of a close up of this. I don't know what to call it, the scallop bubbly pattern of the underside of the hatch. And uh, I think you teased it on your LinkedIn page, you know, a while ago. Okay. Um, what is the reasoning for that pattern? It, it's not purely aesthetic, I, I, I'm guessing. No, it's not. It's, it's actually purely functional. Okay. I mean, it looks nice too, I think. Wow. So let's take that. It's purely functional and it looks nice. That yeah. is the entire aim of this mission. You yeah, do yeah. not sacrifice one for the other, right? So you have now a methodology, um, SMC Carbon or you know CF SMC, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. and we have an efficiency which is like okay, what this is a large hatch. How do you make it structurally sound, mm -hmm. and how do you how do you perf allow it to? to perform what it needs to perform structurally. And their first kind of proposal, it was interesting. I was like, okay, that's, you know, it works because we have a one piece hatch and you, you had a whole episode about, you know, is this a two piece hatch or a one piece hatch, mm -hmm. right? It depends on how you look at it. It's a one piece hatch from structural side, like the structural needs are met in one piece, which means that the solar panel that is attached to it is not part of the structure. Yeah. And can so it's be actually good. three layers, right? There's like this scallop layer, it's two. There's another layer, and then there's the solar panel layer. It's only two. Okay. So the solar panels are. Are they bonded? They're well, you know, the solar panels have to be separate from. So, I guess I can't point to it, but beyond, like, there's a piece that's more exterior to the scalloped piece, right? Yes. That's bigger than the scalloped piece. Yes, and that's the solar farther. panel. That's the solar panel. But that that piece also has like ribs and stuff on it. No, the solar panel is the solar panel. That's it. But what are those little ribs then? Take away the solar panel. What do you need? You need structural rigidity, torsional rigidity. Right, right. Single piece provides that. Okay. But it's like that rib piece, that, that piece that has the rib, that's produced by CPC, correct? Yes. But the solar panels are produced at another place the solar panels are produced at aptera right and so those are two pieces that have to be kind of like put together yes okay so there's the scallop piece then there's the ribbed piece and then there's the solar panel there's not three pieces there's two pieces okay what you're so seeing is, is the, the rear side piece... of the single hatch uh -huh. The solar panel gets bonded to that. And the magic, think about it. The magic is not that there's three pieces, is that there's two. And this single hatch, which is forged or, you know, uh, SMC carbon, right? Mm -hmm. It is two sides, but you only see one. But you don't need two sides to make the structural rigidity. You only need one. And those pillows that that pattern provides mm -hmm. a structural rigidity. Okay. So you have all of a sudden in one piece, that thing is incredibly strong, incredibly light, mm -hmm. torsional rigidity is there, and it's ready to receive its solar panel. Okay. And that's, that's efficient. Is that molded in two pieces or is it molded no. in one piece? One piece. Huh. Because you One know the piece. early renders of the thing coming together yes. from the CPC yes. group, it only shows the scallop piece. Correct. Because the, the, the uh, S, uh, CPC is not going to produce the panel, the solar panel. Aptera is. Right. But CPC there's this, produces. I wish I could point to it. Let me see. You you uh, might be able to. You should have a sharing on... on, on uh, zoom with annotation 
CPC mm -hmm. produces a single piece hatch that is structurally rigid, producible, repeatable, and ready to receive the solar panel. That's the magic. You don't need three pieces. That's how amazing this, this whole vehicle, this whole story is, is that all of, all of the, the decisions run through the filter of what is the most efficient way to do this? And, and frankly, yeah, we had a two-piece hatch before when it was a glass window and everything. Right, right. I mean, you don't have a picture of the, um, like, the when it's coming together, when it's, like, blown apart. I'm going to try to find it. You might find it after this, and you can edit it as you wish. Uh -huh. But there's no need for two pieces on the hatch. Okay. That's beautiful. No, that's, that's beautiful. great. From an engineering standpoint, from a manufacturing standpoint, and and the reason it has those scallops that way is because they kind of put in some ribs uh -huh. as, they, as they would normally do. They meaning engineers looked at it and say, oh yeah, we need some structural rigidity and we need some torsional rigidity. So let's add some ribs. And I'm like, guys, you you guys are magicians. You can make anything you want. And why not? The tools are beautiful in the, in and of themselves. So why can't we have a pattern that matches kind of this solar thing and gives you the rigidity? And they, they did the structural analysis and they're like, yeah, this is better. Go ahead. Like it, it was one of those moments and of on this vehicle, there are several where you just realize and, and, and you're, your partners realize actually this works better. Also because it's not hidden. Most vehicles would have a cover. Right, right. We can't have a cover on this. It weighs too much. It doesn't work. Okay, hold, hold on. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna try to okay, I'm gonna share for a second here. So sure. um this is what I'm talking about. Like before, this part right here is what mm -hmm. showed up on the like the exploded view. Yeah. But then there's this part with the ribs right here, right? And that that extends all the way back to here. So now is this and this all one piece? It's one piece. Okay. The so only this, separate piece this, is the seal. Okay. And then so this is this this all the way back to here is one piece and then just the solar panel is a different piece correct okay because the earlier renders just showed this thing you are correct but let me let me explain that part we're kind of in that 95 to not to 100 percent last sprint mm -hmm. right and actually we're closer to 98 99 percent and there's a lot of things like there's a lag between what we discuss and then what gets implemented and then what, what file gets shared. So we're doing our best I to see. kind of stay ahead of it. Okay. Right. And you can see it, look at the back of the seats. They used to be plastic. Mm, and, yeah. and frankly, we found out like, look, yeah, you can do the plastic, but it's, it's kind of a, it's not a huge price increase, but mm -hmm. it's enough to say, we'll forego the plastic for now. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to drive the whole pricing and cost of everything down yeah as, yeah as it scales mm -hmm. so you have to make these these kind of sacrifices or judgments along the way and that's yeah. one of them like but what you're seeing there and what you saw in in uh if we go back to mine yeah yeah go pl please take it back please uh okay how do i do that i'm gonna stop screen share there you, you go can, you should be able to take it back what you're seeing here is is and I, I made this today is the latest. Okay. Right. Is there any, is there something different? I'm trying to see what's different. Not really, any... but yeah. it's, it's more, it's not that it's different. It's that you're for the first time realizing that there's details that you weren't aware of. Uh-huh. Right. So what else do you see here? Like what, what do you want to talk about, uh, so the yeah, I guess the other things we noticed were 
you know, the edge got turned into foam, the yes. little corners. Yep. Because I guess you, someone realized that that's an area that's probably going to get hit a little bit dinged and was very fragile because it's such a sharp point. And so if you made the plastic clear piece, um, that it would, it would get damaged easily is I'm guessing that's why it got changed to foam, right? Um, excellent observation. And you are, I would say one fifth, correct. Okay. And this is another one. Like, let's take the corner of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. There is like three major things that drive the decision. One is the vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And that you said, oh, if we make that, you know, uh, not plastic, it's, it's, it might get damaged. So let's turn it into foam. Yes. But there's also, if we separate the light components between the rear and the side, mm -hmm. there's a cost advantage. Okay. And there is a manufacturing advantage when you don't have that tight corner coming uh -huh. together in the, in, in the tool for the um, glass SMC. Uh, right. Okay. So those three things you think, oh, we have a problem, but those three things add up to an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity okay. was like, let's save some money on the lighting. Let's, let's improve the quality from the manufacturability of the, of the, the big body panel part. Uh -huh. And the final result is, you know what? Yeah, someone might bump into that. So let's just make it in this, in this rubber, this foam thing. So it's, it's, it's three ways to win. And, and again, that's, I'm, I'm smiling, you're smiling. You're like, your, your mind is kind of running because there's so many of these things. And we've, we've not been able to get to this level of, 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 of explanation until now, but I now see. we have, we have everything, everything is done. Yeah. So now we get to explain how we're going to do it and why these things exist in the way they do. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, because there was exactly. a lot of thank you. There was a lot of questions that we had that you guys yeah. couldn't answer because they were all in flux before. Yes. Yeah. And so now you guys are ready to tell us about it, which is great. Correct. And I can see by your smile that's exactly you know where we are. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I have I have many questions. Like, Shoot. what are the front wheel covers? What is that material? Mm. The wheel pants at, at the current. Uh, iteration, there is a metallic kind of, um, we call it like an upright plate uh -huh. that, that, bond, that, that mechanically fastens to the inner of the, the uh, suspension. Okay. And that will join to, basically you have to carry the load front, aft and outward, right? right. Outward. So you don't have that vibration, you know, alpha is right. not standing, but like you notice how even in gamma, Gamma Gamma is a very interesting vehicle, but there's no vibration in the in the gammas. Mm -hmm. There's some there's some ground clearance issues, but we were we were aware of those, and we've and you notice in this one if you look at the uh, at the at the rear of it, that's that's like fifty plus millimeters higher than the gamma. Oh yeah yeah right. Mm -hmm. So yep. the the material right now is you'll have the EVA foam or the rubber stuff. You'll wow. have probably uh, a mixture between the carbon SMC and the glass SMC. Okay. All right. right. And you guys still have that tilting, right? Like when the, when it turns, the wheel covers tilt a little bit, right? Well, I, I just said like when you tilt it now, uh -huh. right, you will have much more clearance. And right. that was, that was a known issue, mm -hmm. but until you know the exact steering envelope, yeah. This means left, right, up, down, that whole, it, it forms this kind of weird butterfly 3D, you know, shape. Until you know that a hundred percent, we had to present something. Yeah. And once we, once, once it was locked in, it's like, boom, okay, this is our issue. We want to, you know, build for this clearance and this thing, or the, this uh, ability to, to, you know, margin, uh -huh. uh, we quickly changed it. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's not an issue because we haven't cut those tools yet. Okay. I mean, the tilting still happens because it has to happen. 
because of the way that you, like car geometries work, which yeah. is what I was trying to explain in a lot of my videos. People are like, oh, no, it just was put on funny. I'm like, no, I think that's just the way it happens. That's just it has to happen that way. No, you're you're more correct than incorrect on that one. Absolutely. Yeah. But now that it's higher clearance, the, that tilting isn't as as big of an issue because there's going to be plenty of clearance throughout the steering geometry. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so you guys confirmed that the belly is aluminum. Those are aluminum pans and they assist in our cooling system, which is very sophisticated. Okay. And, you know, we've got the liquid cool batteries. We've got the airflow system. It's, it's really, really good. Okay. And so the belly pan definitely does assist in the cooling, like the cooling channels connect thermally to the to the aluminum plate at the bottom. Did I lose you, Jason? No, you okay. didn't lose me. I mean, yes, because that's a little bit outside of my world. Okay. I just yeah. know, I just know that we have we have the cooling, the thermal management of the battery pack uh -huh. under control and and robustly managed. Right. And there's uh -huh. a reason that, that the whole belly pan is aluminum. Okay. Right. It's not composite. It's not plastic. It's not, you know, and it has a really hardened finished uh -huh. finish on it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can notice that we kind of raised the whole belly pan line, mm -hmm. which overall helps the visual aesthetic. Yeah. So uh, going back to that, like, uh, remember the vibration, sound, harshness, that thing? Sure. Um, I think one of the times we talked about how um, carbon fiber is very like uh, it's acoustically pretty reflective, I think, mm -hmm. um, more so than the previous sandwich composite material. And I'm wondering, do, I'm get, have you guys done any kind of simulations of the sound inside the cabin? Um, there's a lot of exposed um, carbon fiber you know, in the hatch, which I think looks great. Um, but does that make it louder or harsher inside? Or have you, or do you, have you done simulations or have you been in mock-ups? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm asking, but. It's like, okay. I, have you guys thought about the yeah. sound quality inside the vehicle and how have you, how have you looked at it? Your concern is correct. And as much as we have like some exposed, you know, um, areas, we also have, you know, we're trying to balance that out with materials that would normally absorb that sound or, you know, disperse it in a way. Mm -hmm. um, some of it le will, you know, will discover, but okay. there's, there's ways to kind of, that's the least of our problems, right? Okay. Right. And it's, 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 the, it's not even a problem. It's like the least of the issue that you say, okay, here we have the freedom to, you know, work on that uh, solution. Right. Mm -hmm. But go, go back to the hatch. There's a reason that it's not two pieces and it's mm -hmm. really elegant and awesome. There's a reason that we don't need to, you know, let's say cover it with a material that adds, but that doesn't mean that others, uh, you know, after, after acquisition can say, yeah, you know what? I've got this cover for the hatch, mm -hmm. right? There, there's a whole world of kind of accessories that, that, that need to be, or not need, that can be addressed with this vehicle. Mm -hmm. That is frankly, one of the most exciting things. It's really awesome. Like how much you can, you can really do with this vehicle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, so I'm guessing that thing that we see on the side, the round thing on the right side is the subwoofer. Is that another speaker thing on the left, on the side that we're seeing here? The Great question. Thing. And it is not. And I know that, that you all have been speculating about that. But, you know, if you watch the video carefully, you'll see a couple of cutouts. And those are um, air exchange. I guess the right term is kind of a baffle. Okay. Right? And they, they exist in most vehicles or probably all, all cars, because when you, when you shut the door 
there's an overpressure situation and that ne that air needs to go somewhere. Oh, okay. Right. So th we okay. have these two air baffles that move it from the interior of the vehicle to a cavity where that air can like ex be exhausted out the rear I and see. it allows, it allows the seal to, or it allows the door seals to properly, to properly do their job. I see. So it's a cover for those two baffles, but yeah, this is one of those huh, things okay. that y'all been ex uh, speculating on. Yeah. We get to clear it up, but right. that's what it is. And they, they exist. If you dig around in your vehicle, you'll find them, but they're normally hidden. I see. And we, we have to present them. You know, they're not, they're not the prettiest thing. So we're, but we have to present them between uh, the bink tub. Mm hmm and the cavity on the yeah. side. By the way, you are not cutting holes in your tub. Okay. Storage. There's first of all, there's no need. And okay. second of all, you wouldn't want to do that. Uh-huh. So those, those, that's what you're seeing. That's what you're seeing here. Okay. I see. Um, so there's a like how much space is there between here and there? Uh, not as much as you think, because it's taken up by some structural panels. I see. Okay. And also, you know, if you think about what is the philosophy of the, you know, let's go back to the aluminum belly pan. Uh -huh. We have, we have some, we have some space between what's inside the cabin and what's underneath. Mm -hmm. And that there's a certain amount of volume. And this, this is the magic that the thermal team has done. And that volume of air needs to, to, needs to be addressed, let's say, right? Okay. So, but it doesn't mean that there's just all this extra space. Mm -hmm. The magic of Aptera is there is no extra space. It's all purpose. Okay. There, there, there is no frunk for a reason because you're not going to stare your store your cotton balls and your, your ear swabs mm -hmm. in your front. There's just no space. I you see. don't need to. And what? we've seen products uh -huh. where they have these, they have these opening, you know, hoods and stuff for what? Nothing. Uh -huh. Yeah. What is in that front area? Cause it seems like there's quite a bit of space there. <laughs> seems like there's quite a bit of space, right? Um, Obviously it's full of stuff. Like, there uh, is an efficient use of everything that is up front and we shortly we'll be able to share what is that exactly up there mm -hmm. and you'll see like oh that makes sense okay like it'll just become that obvious 